Okay, I really think we're going to get a lot of evidence here. I think the second round is going to be really good. Um, I'm not a psychic, but I feel a lot of stuff going on in here. So, um, I'm going to give everybody a chance to talk. Okay, so we just went through our first investigative session. So, I'm going to talk to Casey first. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Casey, um, did you get any evidence during the first session? Just my own impressions. Um, just the phenomena of all the electronics going off. We have fully charged equipment. Um, her SLS cam went off. Mine went on and went totally black. Um, walk, walking into the boys' secondary bedroom, um, I felt like Deanna, like the whole room was kind of just vibrating. Um, there's a lot of um, um, human shapes in the room and around the house. I can see it's a highly creative family, which I totally understand. Um, um, you kind of like things like we do, things that are picked up and gathered, but I'm wondering if you're picking up and gathering energy from things as you go along. Um, we might. I don't know. I, mean, um, I also like think your family is stacked highly clairvoyant. I think everybody all the way down oh, wow. has these abilities and like most clairvoyants, you don't treat it as special. You just kind of go, yeah, I see and hear things. And, um, that's kind of cool, but it, it can be scary too. Um, what else? Um, that room I was almost unable to breathe in with the fireplace. Um, there's an awful lot of people here, and they're all kind of talking at the same time. So I can imagine with you guys having some abilities, and especially your son being wide open as a child, you guys are getting a little overwhelmed. Um, there's a lot here. It's, it's almost impossible for us to start taking a deep breath and going, okay, one at a time, you know, who's talking. Um, well, I mean, some of them are louder than others. I mean, there's some that have just been hanging around since forever. Consistent, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we may have even brought a couple with us when we're in Nebraska, but there's definitely more than one, and I know there's at least one child. Mm -hmm. I think there's more than one. Yeah, your sons might be collecting them, you might be collecting them, your father might be collecting them. I mean, it's it, it's interesting and cool, and at the same time, it um, it's almost overwhelming. So I can imagine you guys um, either have gotten used to that or you feel it a lot. I'm just doing my <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, there, uh, Casey. Okay, next one is Keith. Okay, did you pick up anything? Uh, get any kind of evidence during first session? Um, oh, other than like yeah. a weird sound mm -hmm. that uh, came on my, my recorder when I. thing and like made it go loud and we were able to hear it and I pinpointed it and it sounded like almost like a distant um, dragon roar. <laughs> like, oh really? Yes. Okay, okay. Oh, cool. Like a dragon. Okay. It might have been the AC. No, it wasn't in here. It was in, we were in the, uh, oh. the ambulance. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And, there was, and, and we didn't hear it at the time and we were quiet and there was some like rustling inside there that we didn't do. Okay. Okay. And no one's gotten any EVPs yet. Okay, so. Um, yeah. Were you telling the story about the hoodie? The hoodie? Yeah, it, it just it got me thinking and tripped me out because back in 2009, I was working in the security industry. And I was in an apartment called Sunny Slope off of Florin and Stockton Boulevard area, Florin Road, Stockton Boulevard. And this kid came running up to me, scared to death. I knew from the apartment complex I was at, someone was going to kill him. I wasn't able to save him. He got killed right then. Just He went running through a one breezeway. I went the other way to go around to try to stop him and, and find out what he was running from. Boom, boom, gunshots. Come around the corner. He's laying there dead, just staring at me. Bullet hole in his head. So I grabbed a black hoodie on. She walked into the room and said she saw, saw someone with a black hoodie. That freaked me out. Whoa. Okay. And it's yeah. like, I, I've always felt weird about him because I, I, I should have been able to save him, but I wasn't. You think he attached himself to you? Yeah. I don't know. I caught the guy that did it, and he went to prison. Maybe he's thanking you. Yeah, he's probably attached But I mean, since 2009, I mean, you're welcome, dude. Come on. <laughs> okay, yeah, because I was actually there when you were talking about the black hoodie, yeah. and now you're confirming you with this story. Yeah, I saw yeah. when I first went in. I heard you say that. And that's what made it yeah. click in my mind. I, I got to thinking that was familiar, and then I sat down for a second, and like, whoa, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like that. Wow. I mean, the last, I mean, we had just spoken. He was wearing a black hoodie, and he went out, boom, he's dead. And then there was, I have to mention one more thing. 
you said something about a fountain, and then yeah, we 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 see a book with a fountain on it, and it was like, what the heck? So that was kind of weird. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, you got something, uh, Des? Yeah. What was what was um, it? Well, first I did, we did a spirit box, and the only thing that we did get was a voice come through and say paranormal, other than that, nothing. But I was taking pictures in the ambulance, and I was sitting on the side next to the house. I took a picture of the wall right in front of me, and I actually have it right here. I, as I went to go press the flat uh, to take a picture, I saw it clearly, clear as day, an orb flying on the wall, and I actually caught the motion of it flying up the wall, and I actually caught it on the photo as well. That's you what you asked them. them to do, isn't it? Yeah, you can ask them. When I saw it, I'm like, please tell me I just caught that. Mm-hmm. And when I look back at the photo, do you want to see? <laughs> I actually did. You can see right there. And if it's hard to see one that chase the Yeah. And if you want to come over here and see the motion of it, so you're going to see it fly right up here where it's going to, like where I catch it. Did you so say you got an EVP in orb. there too, Des? You can tell that's a white orb because okay. dust is like a flurry of snow. Okay. I think she I'm got it from her spirit box. I love my yeah. photo, phone. It does motion picture camera or pictures. Okay. Right here, you'll see it fly up. Okay. Right when I take a picture. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Whoa. And I'm trying to get I'm trying to um, get some orbs that are showing some kind of intelligent movement. So. Um, so we're going to continue with that. Polenta? I heard whispering in this room, and all my, while my equipment, well, let me start off, but my equipment was working, and then it stopped working, and something was playing with my computer, because I didn't, I had the mouse just sitting still, and the arrow was just going all over, and it kept opening, opening, opening windows, and I must, I don't know, I probably had, like, 60 windows of connect open. Mm -hmm. And then I heard somebody whispering in this bedroom. And when I had the spirit box going here, I heard a little kid going, doo, 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 something like that. Like, doo, 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 doo. can't remember what I was saying when when it did that. Okay. Do you hear your friend saying that? Doo, 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 doo. Okay, Deanna? Um, I just feel energy everywhere. It feels like um, when there's like a tornado and it just builds up energy and then scatters everything everywhere. That's that's how it feels. Every single like mannequin, doll, it, everything charged with energy. Every stone in here charged with energy. All the paintings have energy. There's definitely portals in here, especially in the kids' room. Um, outside, of course, there's spirits out in the yard. There's cats everywhere. Cats are definitely about the fireplace? Is, what, is it oh. like a portal or something going on so over there? Or what? I can tell you that jade on the fireplace, that's the kind of jade around here. It was built in the 50s. Um, there's rose quartz, there's obsidian, protective stones, there's granite. And all this stuff was placed one by one. The heart, the heart of the home is where the fireplace is, so they spent a lot of time um, putting the stones in there. That's the heart of the home there, so there's a lot of energy there. Um, and the mass, uh, when I walk by the mass, it's like, I feel energy from the mass, too, like, 
I see ri- uh, like, ritualistic energy back there. Like, summoning power energy. Manifesting energy coming from there. So there's some kind of energy attached to those masks? You think? Yeah. Well, I think what's going on is all the paranormal creatures there and everything is just drawn to the energy that's in the stones and the masks. Because the people that make masks and stuff like that, they deal with a certain intent and certain energy, and the spirit world is drawn to that. So there's a lot of places to live here <coughs> in the spirit, like stones and wood, petrified wood also on there. It's, it's basically an altar, the shelves coming off of the fireplace, and things have probably come out of that. I don't think it was with a fire back there, but... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Things well, probably manifest out of the fire. And you said those masks are from Africa? Some are from Africa, some are from Mexico. I'm not sure which or which, okay. but I know that I've got all kinds of tribal artifacts from Africa and other 